Will we be seeing more co-branded marketing campaigns used in the CPG industry? So if you watched the Super Bowl, which I assume you did because it's the most watched event, you probably saw this commercial. You, hold my beer. Hurry up, peanut. So in my opinion, the Bud Light and Game of Thrones commercial was one of the best commercials of the Super Bowl. Game of Thrones is heading into their last season. It's a huge show in popular culture. And you guys know with, with Bud Light, one of their um, one of their campaigns, the Dilly Dilly campaigns that are kind of surrounding like the medieval times, it just kind of fits really well with this like co-branded effort. And I believe the teams that Whedon and Kennedy, I believe, put this together with Game of Thrones, their creative, their production team, a lot of their uh, input. They put together a really good commercial. It was just um, one of those kind of like hold my beer type of moments in that commercial that just kind of fit perfectly for a co-branded effort with both sides. Now I'll probably talk about the other commercial from Bud Light that has been uh, getting a lot of attention lately uh, in another video, but this one's gonna be surrounding like co-branding, marketing and advertising partnerships. So I think it's important for me to kind of take a step back, explain a little bit about what co-branding is. Co-branding is a strategic marketing and advertising partnership between two brands where the success of one brand brings success to the other. Co-branding is effective with building awareness, opening up new markets, and overall building a better chance of elevated sales. But for this co-branding partnership to work, it needs to be a win-win for both players both sides, both brands need to make sure they get value out of this. So let's unpack what I just said there. A marketing partnership with two brands, that's easy to do. Now a marketing partnership with two brands where two audiences get value, that's a whole different subject. That's extremely hard, that's not easy to do. And I believe this one pulled it off and I believe that if pulled off correctly, it can have a lot of fruits come from a co-branded effort between two brands. So if you could figure out the latter, you tend to have this, what I call like a one plus one equals three effect from the partnership. First, you naturally get an increased awareness. Secondly, you get the ability to possibly cross into other markets. And this could create, especially in the right situations with the CPG product, you can have what they call breakaway innovation, essentially stretches the boundaries and challenges the conventional patterns of consumption. With innovation being at a premium nowadays, especially in consumer packaged goods, anytime you have the ability to innovate through a variety of different ways, it can be very beneficial to you. And then thirdly, you know, there's an element of increased revenue that you would assume that would come from a great co-branded marketing partnership. So why do I think we're going to see more of these in the future, more of these co-branded marketing, um, marketing advertising, or maybe even a product? I think first off, number one for me is the world is becoming more noisy and there's a ton of messaging that's getting thrown at people. There's a ton of products that are on the shelf now. Um, you know, there's an overload of decisions that need to be made to, to ultimately get to a purchase for a consumer. Anytime you have the ability to create awareness that leads to traffic towards both physical retail or digital retail is a great thing. And as like physical retail continues to lose its like stronghold on the overall retail community and digital sales become a bigger proportion of the overall retail sales, brands need to learn how to create traffic. They need to understand the different demand drivers that are out there with levers they can pull. And this is one of the great levers to pull to create awareness and get traffic towards whatever source you're trying to drive it to. Now in the case that we're talking about here with the beverage or, or we're talking about a alcoholic beverage, a lot of the purchase behavior is still happening in a physical retail, though digital e-commerce growth of alcohol sales is growing immensely. You guys can look at you know some of the data if you want on that, but it's still very much a very much an analog physical retail world. For bigger beverage brands, your goal is still to drive traffic towards physical retail. But for a lot of other brands that are uh, 
maybe digitally native or have a higher proportion of their sales towards maybe a younger crowd, they might not necessarily be throwing traffic towards a physical retailer. They might be focusing more on the digital side. And going along with digital, the community within digital is very fragmented. And because of that, you, know, you kind of have to find these ancillary tribes. You need to figure out who you could partner with to and who you have similarities with in your audiences to kind of create this network effect where you get this one plus one equals three type of environment. This idea that a rising tide raises all boats. You're aiming to get your fragmented fans to cross over with your partner and then you know, kind of them doing the same to you. Um, like I said at the beginning, these only work in a win-win scenario. This isn't a, how can I siphon off a bigger brand or a brand that's a little bit stronger than mine? When you approach partners like that, they should see that this is not a good deal for them and, and odds are you're not gonna get that deal. Uh, you're not gonna get that co-branded partnership. You're hearing this, you're thinking, you know, I wanna obviously implement this into my brand. It sounds like a great idea. So how do you how do you implement this? And I think it's first important just to kind of say there's a there's a multitude of layers in terms of how you can approach these partnerships. They can be very deep partners. They can be you know one-off ad hoc type of things. They can also be you know multi-dimensional in the sense that they could be like traditional ads, um, like like we saw from the Bud Light Game of Thrones co-branded effort. Could just be surrounding like digital um, digital creative. Um, you could also have it aligned with product. You guys remember I, I talked a little bit about licensed flavors um, through the lens of like sports nutrition, CPG. I'll make sure that I throw a pop-up here so you guys can watch that video if you have not watched that one yet. Or it could simply just be you know something through social media, some type of partner giveaway, something like that. If you're watching this and you're part of a large CPG portfolio or a large CPG brand, you obviously have the world at your hands. You, you can do any of these layers, any of these dimensions, um, kind of create a ton of different ideas that fit with the brand. But just remember, the bigger and the more legacy that CPG brand is, the more kind of emotions, long-standing purchase behavior, the idea that consumers have a, have a perception of what you are and, and what you should be, you're going against some of those. And it's important just to make sure that whoever you do co-brand or partner with on any of these ideas, you make sure it's good for the brand you make sure it's not going to alienate some of your core customers. Now, if you're a smaller CPG brand, I would suggest probably looking more towards like digital creative, some, you know, creating something, bootstrap, um, something that's gonna live on your YouTube, on your social medias, your partners, YouTube, their social media. Creative ideation in idea at meritocracy does not always mean that you have to spend a bunch of money. You can bootstrap these ideas and still create something that is just as effective as anybody else on the market. Or you could just go very simple. Um, something that you see quite often is like partnering with giveaways or, or different things on social media or coming up with some type of co-branded campaign on social media. A lot of consumers now are obviously activating with CPG brands on social media. So this is kind of their first um, introduction sometimes with brands. They're not really in a purchase. Um, they're not really in a purchase position at that time when they do activate on social media. So this is a brand building. This is a awareness play. This is getting some traffic in the top of the funnel. Hopefully then eventually you can convert them down to a purchase. And maybe you know, you're a smaller brand, but you have a ton of traction, you have a brand that's growing extremely well and has a lot of, um, has a lot of equity with the consumers that you're reaching and your partner does as well. Those are the partnerships you wanna double down on. Those are the partnerships you wanna really go after. But regardless of your size of your business or the level in which you want to implement this co-brand idea, I think it's one of those things that if your plan is well thought out, your execution is on point, and you have the follow through to continue to give value on both sides of the equation, I think this is a great idea. This is something that you should definitely look at if you are a CPG brand that's looking to grow this year. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you wanna help support me, make sure you guys hit that thumbs up button on this video. If this is the first time you've been introduced to my videos, would love for you guys to be a part of my community by subscribing to my channel. I upload several videos just like this weekly. And if you guys wanna connect further outside of this platform, I do include all of my social media links down below. I just wanna thank you guys again for your time. Hopefully I gave you some value in return and we'll see you guys on the next video.